Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending December 15th. This show is going to be devoted totally to the Voyager 1 probe. Tom asked me a little over a week ago to explain what's actually happening with the Voyager 1 probe as it's leaving the heliosphere, the influence of our solar system, and entering into interstellar space. Well, pretty much it is at this time into internet, interstellar space with the exception of one effect that is still lingering from our solar system and especially from the sun itself, which I will explain after this simple explanation. I think the best way you can do something is to break it down into a simple explanation and using an illustration of a boat leaving the influence of a river going out into the bay towards the ocean. There's a point to where the water particles and the influence of the river leaves off and becomes the influence of the ocean itself and the particles of the H2O that are from the ocean. So listen to this simple explanation and see if it makes it a little bit easier to understand. Okay, this is going to be a demonstration to simplify what's going on with the Voyager space probe. I'm going to use the analogy of a boat going from the river into the ocean itself. And there's water particles that is that are influencing the boat itself and as the boat is coming out of a river into the open bay, it is still being influenced by the currents of the river. If you do a test of the water, you can sample the water and you'll find out it's pretty much fresh water. There's no salt in the water. So still, all of the influence, even though it's out in this area, is pretty much influence of the H2O particles from the river. As it gets a little bit farther out, you get into a turbulent region. It starts moving the boat around a little bit going back and forth but it still stays pretty much in a northerly direction. You sample the water and there's a little bit of salt in the water. And detecting the salt you know that all of a sudden there's some changes going on here. As you go a little bit farther, you do some more sampling, you're going to find more salt in the water and that salt is going to let you know that you're getting closer and closer to the influence of the ocean itself. And as you get into this region, Instead of moving in a northerly direction, your boat is going to start moving in an easterly direction. You do another sampling of the water. The water is pretty much as salty as ocean water, so you know the influence of all the H2O particles are pretty much all ocean particles, and there's no influence of the river anymore. By now, you're traveling completely in an easterly direction, and there's no northerly component to your motion. So you're completely under the influence of the ocean current itself. Now this is what has actually happened to the Voyager 1 space probe. It went from the solar particles, which are positive and negative ions influencing it, to the region of turbulence, and it has passed through the region of turbulence into the region of interstellar space where the only influence right now is the interstellar particles from other stars. Now in this last explanation, I did not take into account any of the sun's magnetic effects, which as of December 3rd, they had found out that there was a thing called the magnetic highway that was detected. And evidently the sun's magnetic influence not only is still around for the spacecraft, but it increased in a factor of 10. And because of the fact of the particles themselves from interstellar space actually squeezing the magnetic field, it increased the force lines. So right now this craft is within the magnetic sphere of the influence of our solar system and our sun most particularly still and it may be all the way to the year 2015 before the probe leaves the very last effects of our solar system entirely and leaves this region so technically it is still within some influence of our sun now as far as the particle influence there's very few particles from the sun that are influencing it and what I mean by influence too the Voyager 1 spacecraft is not like a boat where it's being moved around by these particles. It's in a very, very low density region. What it has to do is use a detector to detect these particles. So that one part of the analogy kind of breaks down that as the particles change directions, the Voyager probe is not going to change directions at all. It's going to continue exactly on the same path. But it has detectors so that it can actually be able to show what direction those particles are coming from and whether they come from the direction of the sun or the direction of interstellar space. Right now, the majority of the high-speed particles are going along this magnetic highway just because of that effect. What I'd like to do also is I'd like to share some pictures here. I found one website in particular, and let me get it up here. It's called Heavens Above. 
and this gives you a very good orientation of all five spacecraft that we have on the way out of our solar system with the one exception New Horizons is not out of the solar system yet it's on its way to Pluto and it will eventually be another craft that leaves our solar system and the, goes into interstellar space. Right now the four craft that are actually outside of the range of our solar system are Pioneer 10 and 11 and Voyager 1 and 2. Voyager 1 is the farthest away right now followed by Pioneer 10. Now the reason why Voyager 1 is a little bit farther than Pioneer 10 even though it was launched later is because of the speed that it's at because of the slingshot effect and the directions it was going it picked up speed so it is as farther away and Pioneer 10 is uh, right behind it although not in the same direction interestingly enough which will probably help with the data that we collect Pioneer 10 is leaving our solar system in the exact opposite direction and headed towards the constellation Taurus whereas Voyager is headed out of our solar system on the other side and it's uh, whereas Pioneer 10 is headed along the uh, ecliptic if you picture a disk like this way looking at a disk edge on Pioneer 10 is leaving pretty much straight along the path of the disk whereas on the other direction if you picture an angle up at about 34 degrees that is the way Voyager is leaving our system and headed towards the constellation Ophiuchus and it's going to be a long time before they come into contact with any other stars I think the first encounter will be around 42,000 years from now Voyager 1 will pass within an M class star and when I mean uh, within the star about 1.6 light years away from uh, an M class red dwarf star and then Pioneer it's going to take about 2 million years for Pioneer to get close to one of the stars in the constellation Taurus so we're talking quite some time but this gives you an idea looking at these pictures here one, is, one shot is from above the ecliptic plane and one is sh shot from the side but maybe 10 degrees above the ecliptic plane so you can get a little bit better view and I will also include some links too there's some interesting Wikipedia links to Voyager Pioneer and uh, just uh, some information about the heliosphere and what it actually is comprised of so I hope this gives you something to start with it gives you a little bit idea of what actually is going on and what's going to happen in interstellar space now these probes long before they get towards any planetary system or anywhere close where they could even possibly be detected they're pretty much going to be dead craft and I would think myself if there was such a thing as an alien probe that even entered our solar system it would be traveling from a planet to where it'd be so long ago since it was launched that there would be nothing active on board and I don't know with our best equipment if it even entered within maybe the radius of our the distance from the planet Mars would we even be able to detect that it was even in our solar system maybe not even if it got within maybe twice the distance of the moon if the spacecraft was dead and had no active power system it could probably pass right through our solar system without us even knowing that some type of a probe or an alien craft had so even though the fact people you know want to believe that these craft may eventually get detected by alien civilizations I think that's uh, very unlikely too but you never know I mean there is always even even if possibility is one in billions upon billions it still does have a, a level of possibility as low as that may be so anyway I hope that gives people a little bit of information on what's going on with our interplanetary probes and what's going to be happening with them in the future take care everybody I will catch you next week